to kick us off? Who did last time? I did. Welcome back to the Whiskey Business Podcast. We have a special guest today. Very special. Um, dang it, how are we going to introduce... Do, do, do we want the guests to introduce themselves, or do you want... Well, do we call him Trinidad or TJ? Trinidad. That's up to you guys. Whatever you would like to do. That's your full name. Yeah, Trinidad. Trinidad. See, I can't... Yeah, you can't, you can't pronounce it the correct way. Wait, wait, Trinidad. 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 I'm not even going to try. I feel like that really? would be more... Does it sound good? It would be more offensive if I Trinidad. tried than... Trinidad. Trinidad. Yeah, it's a... Hey! Dude. It's perfect, though. We have a guest. <laughs> we have a guest. It's his first time ever on a podcast, so it's kind of a big deal. We told him we always put the beautiful people out front, so he put himself front and center. Yep, that's right. <laughs> All right, so uh, to restart this intro. Oh, no, this intro is great. It's, oh, it's great. Let's send it. We're going to We're gonna send it. Send it. I'm right. Travis. This is Josh, and this is the Whiskey and Business in, Podcast. In Trinidad. Trinidad. In Trinidad. TJ. TJ. Well, we're gonna, it's TJ. We're going to get everybody. canceled. <laughs> uh, so what? So today's podcast, we're going to talk about business managing, right? You uh, management, tell, us, yeah. tell us a little bit, or the guests, or the audience, about uh, kind of what you do. Well, I work on a construction site. I am a foreman on it. I work with a lot of subcontractors, up to like 80 to something, 90 people on there. Um, phone calls, dealing with... Uh, shit. Um, Wrong industry. Now, the... now I'm gone. Now you're on the. Yeah, that, that was bad. The fire here, brother. Um, no, just naturally, man. Just, just natural. Us. Like they're not watching. Like okay. all these people are just right. not watching. We're just. Yeah. All right. You all know right, what you right. do. You've told me a million times. I know. <laughs> so, um, should I just start from here? I feel like I fucked this up. We're not going to cut anything. Oh, this is all live. God. Okay. <laughs> this is why the best bloopers uh, make I, I the best bloopers ever. I, I only add things to the podcast. I never cut. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so, uh, oh, maybe we should premise that with people on the whiskey. Let, like, let, let hey, them know. By the way. This by the way, you just roll with you're, it? You roll with everything. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. we And that's why all of our clips are super funny and, and, we, and we can make fun of each other all the time. But then we transition to you introducing the whiskey. And we'll ask the question yep. again later. Yeah. <laughs> we ask the question. <laughs> so, TJ, where so, are we TJ, drinking? What are we drinking? <laughs> <laughs> we are drinking a Woodenville um, bourbon and port cask finish on here. Um, port is also wine, um, and this is what we are we will be drinking today. So, yeah, that's all I got. We're gonna pour it up. We're gonna do it, yeah. And then at the end of the podcast, we're all going to give our impressions on what we think about its taste. Yes. I'm pretty sure it will taste. It's porty. How will we interpret it's those tastes? Porty and, and delicious. I'll, I'll say good. Josh will say, hmm, has notes of... Mm, what is it? Uh, and I don't rubber, know what TJ's going to say. He's going to be a wild uh, person. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a scotch guy. <laughs> well, so mm. just uh, we're going to cheers. Don't review it until okay. the end. All right. So cheers. Let's try it out. Hmm. I do actually really like this. Um, uh, that was hey, a li- that was no, no reviews. No, I'm just saying that was a limited. That was a limited release. I'm telling you about it. It was a limited release. Yeah. Um, and I snagged what? There was only one. I only have two, right? This is the second one. This really sucks because the moment I actually opened it, I You're like, bought way more because no. they had a lot, and they were actually just letting like like they would let me buy it. Well, like every like other day, you can go in there and right. grab one. Dude, man. They, and it was a limited release, so now you can order. Kind of, you can it's always a shame when you like swoop in and get something that's special, and then later you realize you should have gotten like a way more of it because it becomes your favorite thing. Yeah. I've had that happen with like cigars or certain pipe tobacco. Yeah. You try to collect something, and then you finally try it, and you're like, oh, dang it, dude. I should have bought more. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You're saving it for a very special day, and then you try it, and you're like, no, no, now yeah. it's gone. No, it's too late. <laughs> it's just my grass. I so. do that with wine all the time. Wine. You buy a bottle of wine that you really like, and you're like, should have bought a case of it. And then it's gone, and you never find it again. So you're a wine, so you're more of a wine drinker then? No, I am more of a whiskey and cigar, a scotch and cigar guy. Scotch. 
So I like my oh, Scotch. What's your favorite Scotch so far? The Dalmore 15 is my favorite Scotch overall. Really? So, Dalmore but you can't 15. find it here. It is. You know what? And, and so at, when we go to the racketeer, so Rachel, yeah. your girlfriend. Um, hey, so you can't share that information oh, uh, for the internet. Beep. But then not your beep. Like that would that would sound really weird if I if you beeped me out now. We're making the yoki, right? Yeah. Making yoki, yes, making yeah. yoki. There but go. uh, uh, she's really good at like uh, uh, when I go in there, she knows I like bourbon. So she's like, oh, you know, that's too PD for you. <laughs> you don't like the PD? I thing? hate the PD. Oh, I'm the exact. I hate oh, PD. God, yeah, I man. PD. Scotch mm. is just something I can't get on board with unless it's like, unless it's pretty subtle. Um, man, I, yeah, I just I don't know why Scotch is like that. I don't like the 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 the, the burn, uh, uh, spice taste. I just don't like it. the dryness of it. I really like the. Uh, I like. I just like bourbon. I like it. I like it all. I don't discriminate. Okay, Travis. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I, I will tolerate just about anything. <laughs> just like, yeah. It's like yeah, my, it's like my taste in women. Like a, you know, I just. Best. <laughs> Inside a cookie's best. <laughs> Last episode, we had that clip. We dropped it in there, and then I realized that we were referencing that. But the time you shot out of your seat was when we did eagle or like wolf, rare wolf or something. Wolf something. Oh, really? Because it was one of the ones I saw in the line. Yes. I grabbed it. It was the $7. Wolf Moon. It was Wolf Moon. Oh, yeah, and then right. you take the drink and you shoot <laughs> out of your chair. Moon. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so, yeah. this episode, this episode is about managing a team, and th we chose that because TJ himself manages a team. Yeah. And how long have you been in that position with where you work? Where, where I work now, eight, just over eight months. Okay. So I've been in that position with this company for eight months now. Um, Did you have to work your way up to that? I got hired on there, hired into the company as a carpenter. And slowly, as things were going on, I slowly got myself into a role to where I was starting to run guys and solve problems and do more and more from there. Um, so in a way, I did have to work myself in there and with my construction experience, helped out just knowing things, what yeah. was wrong, what was right, and being able to talk to people um, and get things done in a happy manner, not so, an angry manner. So if you put out enough fires, you become the firefighter. Yes, if you put out, <laughs> that is exactly it. You become the fire chief real quick. <laughs> what were you doing before that? Was it still managing? So I actually was um, with another construction company over in Spokane doing cabinets and a little bit of construction management as well. Oh, um, nice. Okay. So I, I learned a lot of finished carpentry stuff on that side and a little bit of the construction management. Um, I also went two years to NIC for a construction management degree, um, so our certificate, and uh, yeah. You did like a trade certificate? Yeah, I did a trade certificate over there. Did you do like any other college before that? No, I most of my construction knowledge came from just working, framing, pile, flooring, all that stuff, just learning how to do everything. Gotcha. Um, and then NIC, they do the really big raffle house. So um, build a house and all that was my first year of school. And then the second year was all the computer stuff, sitting mm. in the classroom and learning all that. That's pretty cool. And I, mm -hmm. dude, the NIU's got some good stuff, huh? Some good trade certificates. NIC. NIC, is that what it is? Yeah, NIC. Oh, NIC. What's the, what's the difference? Yeah. NIC is the word in math from, right? North what Idaho is College one? is the, the one right down the road over here. And what's, NI, what's NIU? I don't know what NIU is. is there's, 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 the, there's U of I. Oh, that's, yeah. that's probably what I was thinking. Abbreviations are hard, Josh. North, I know. North, there is no North Idaho <laughs> University. It's North Idaho College. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Cut and that out. No, there's, then there's LCSC. No cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Only additions. Um, right, I can put a meme over your face if you're cool. really that's embarrassed. Cool, uh, yeah, trades. Because I did a lot of trades back then where I managed. I managed a, a, a warehouse in... I was an elevator mechanic um, in like an apprenticeship program. And before that, I was, I was basically just a... Uh, a parts manager and I had to manage an entire branch of elevator parts like in elevator parts there's there's tens of thousands of parts like yeah. very small capacitors all the way to buttons and rings around the buttons like and so I had to be the one to order all the parts for every job make sure everything's all the all, make sure all the mechanics have tools so give us the give us the ins and outs like okay on a managing day what's like 
what's like a busy day to you? Like, what is all? The, what do you all do with that? Well, day starts, and I have to first line out my guys on what they have to do and get them going. Make sure they have the materials. Um, which materials and lining out is something that we can revisit because I think it's an issue of today. Um, but I do that and then I have to go and do my logs. So my logs consist of every subcontractor that's on the site, what they're doing, taking a picture, um, how many people are there, how many hours they're working. I run around and do that for the first part of my morning and then revisit my guys, um, answer the phone calls in between there to solve problems because not everything goes so smoothly. Um, and then right before lunch, I go back to revisit my logs to make sure everything's going good. Um, all my subcontractors are in. And then after that, I try and actually throw on my bags and get some things done with everyone to make sure we're hitting our dates and all that stuff. Um, that usually does not happen though. I usually get a phone call in between there or a few of them where I have to go run around and either find materials or fix something um, like half walls. Not that a little half wall is sometimes longer than it needs to be, and that's usually what my day consists of. So, <laughs> it, it's very um, sporadic. It's, it's do, you, do you like like the responsibility of managing other people more than working as much with your hands, like when you're one of the guys on the ground? I I enjoy the high stress of it. I enjoy yeah. being the one where it's like, okay, I have the accountability, the responsibility. I need to get this done because I I do everything from um, finishing a building so the framing I have one other guy that takes everything from framing and then once it gets drywall into it then I take it over yeah and then I go into the process of finaling the building for occupancy mm. and then after that um, it just gets turned over so I, I get the stress of it where like this building has to be finalized done and out of um, and I have to make sure all my guys are getting stuff done so we meet our date and I love the high stress environment that makes so much sense like I, I I've so I've worked at two of the biggest employers here in Coeur d'Alene. My very first job was a dishwasher um, at the resort, right? So I worked my way up to where I was like training the dish crew. And then I worked my way up to training like pantry chefs, like in that section. Then I became a CNA and I became one of the people that was a preceptor. So you would train the new people that got hired. Yeah. I was only there for a month before I started training new people to be there. Yeah. I wasn't even past my three months like thing. And I just, when I, all that experience taught me like there's something so unique about actually helping teach people in like the shit when you're working in the middle of a bunch of stuff, like taking somebody and first of all, figuring out the best way to do something and then trying to communicate that to your team. Yeah. I feel like that's a, like the, it's an entrepreneurial trait in some ways. And it's, I mean, it's just being a good worker, but when you have that and then you realize how important it is to teach everybody else that comes after yeah. you how to do it the right way because you see everyone before you doing it the wrong way <laughs> or getting, getting so desensitized with their jobs that they start cutting corners and doing shit they shouldn't do not following the best procedure then it's like get it, being in that leadership role gives you the opportunity to make it better for everybody yeah try to the the teaching aspect actually uh it's sometimes challenging because you have to be a very very good teacher and what i mean by that is not everyone has the same process you know mm. so if or I, or it's the same learning style too. Yeah, it, the learning style and everything. Like if I come to you and I show you how to do this and I explain it, you may get it off the bat. But then Travis, you're not going to get it off the bat. You know, I like if we do it together, <laughs> you may figure it out. Like that's that's. So you just hold, hold my hand and. Yes, you like now with the crew. I've learned like okay, if I tell this guy we've done it once or twice, like hey, go do this, do it like this, one, two, three, four, boom. But then some other guys, even if they've done it a hundred times, it's still like, okay, let's walk over there. Let's do it. Let's go real slow. And then after we do the first one, then they should be able to production and go, go, go. But I, that, that teaching aspect of it is sometimes really, really challenging to get someone to understand your vision in your head to get the picture you have here into theirs is, yeah. is a challenging topic at times. And it's very, you have to be patient. You have to be very patient to figure out the best way for them to move on. Well, it's a trip because like you can you can be really good at your job and then be asked to train somebody or be a leader in that job and that you it could not compute. There's a specific type of person that needs to manage people. 
a, yes. specific, a specific type of person who can teach people, who can have the patience. Like I'd say the best bosses are the ones that are the most patient, but not necessarily patient to be walked all over by your employees because yeah. then you're a bad boss. A good boss knows how to understand and take the time to understand this person needs this way to learn or this person yeah. is not a good fit for this company. Because that's an important thing to, know, to notice too, is if you're gonna if you're gonna let an employee stay there, who does not belong in this field of work or does not belong in this place, and will cost you money, cost them hardship because they're gonna be just corrected every single day and end up being super depressed about it. No, recognizing that early on is so important too. Yeah, I, I mean, one you have. Um hire quick fire fast so mm -hmm. that's the first thing you have yes. uh, but a lot of times like there's guys that don't know everything especially in the construction industry there i mean i do not know everything i i say i know nothing you know the things i do know i know a little bit and i have a lot to learn you know i do know quite a bit of things but it's still a lot of things to learn yeah. but you can always tell when there's a guy that's trying to figure it out and trying to do it a certain way and you can be patient and you're like they will get it one day but then you have the other ones where it's a little more like, will they get it? And that's where it goes into like, I don't know if it's going to work out here. You know, those guys that are, will they get it? Generally, what's their hubris like? Are they the ones that think that they're the shit? <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. and, and there's, there's a specific type of worker that I've encountered in my past where it's like they think they're the bee's knees. They, they, they're, they're, they're just the best of the best. And you're like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> because not only are they unteachable, yeah. because they they get offended every time you correct them, but also they're putting out like a flawed product, or they're they're doing a they're they're making mistakes that they own as just everyone else is crazy. That's a dangerous employee to have. Yeah. Oh, I, have you encountered that before? I, I have that. I have encountered it a few times. It's um. It's like oh no. <laughs> it's interesting. I think it goes to the insecurity of people though. Usually people that want, that think they know everything, and they're just insecure about being told. Oh, yeah, it's all, they're pro projecting that yeah. on everybody yeah. else, like, I am. I am the maniac. Which <laughs> confidence is good, you know? Yeah. I mean, they have the confidence, but even with all the confidence and being able to do things, you have to be able to be a student. You have to be able to learn, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of those people that we're talking about, they are not students. They are not learners. They are right. people who just think they know it all, they can do it, they can do anything. And it's not a good quality product at the end. Well, there's, 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 uh, uh, you know, people that are confident, but they have, um, they're emotionally immature. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and then the emotional mature ones cannot, can understand that people are just, they can take criticism. Like I, th I, in, in business, like in Travis and I, you know, me and him take criticism all the time, like no. to each other, you know, like, Hey Josh, um, you need to fucking, you know, fix this shit, clients getting a hold of me, blah, 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 blah. or, you know, vice versa, be like, Travis, but fuck, dude, you know? Yeah. But, like, it's all out of, like, appreciation of, like, we respect each other in both instances of what we do, mm -hmm. but we both have the maturity level, you know, intellectually to be like, I have a lot to learn, I don't know anything, I don't know everything, you know, um, and I don't know how to do every single thing perfectly in a business. Managing a team is really fucking hard. Yeah. Like, because we have, what, we have five five employees to manage. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm not good at delegating everybody out, you know, yeah. when it comes to the business. You know, when it, you know back then I was, at, I was good at delegating my own thing. Like, I'm responsible for this, and that's it. That's all I'm responsible for. But now I'm, you know, being intertwined with, I'm responsible for everything. Yeah. It's like, well, fuck, I'm not good at everything. Well, it's like the conversation we had yesterday. Um, you, it, it, I, I share the same sentiment where it's really hard to rely on the team that you've put in place to rely upon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, we hired them for this reason, yet it's so hard just to, like, hand it off and have them do it when we're so used to doing everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. But also... It's like the other day, we, we, you were making deals and then you're, it's in the back of your head like, you know, it's going to take more time to explain to the team what I just did, <laughs> even though the clients are going to ask about it, than for me just to finish it all myself. Like right. projects that you just, you just, and I do the exact same thing. No. I'll get a phone call, can you do this thing? And I'm like, 
yet. And, yeah, I, and well. I just do it at, at, in conjunction with the rest of what's going on. Right. Because it's so, it's difficult to trust, especially if you, and you and I have taken so many hits over the years on the things that we've learned because we had to learn. We t we're self-taught. We learned from everybody we possibly could to get to where we are. And now it's hard to have any trust that anyone else could have that unique set of skills. Right. And that's why we're training our team every single yeah. day. And we're finding those pain points and we're over explaining. When I teach people how to wash dishes, it's washing dishes, how, how hard could that be? Well, it it can be very process. it can be a lot easier yeah. if you do it fucking right, right. <laughs> and you know <laughs> and you know I'd be like listen you're what and that's kind of how I'd start I'm like hey, listen you're here to wash dishes and yeah it's not complicated but if you do it the way I'm going to show you how to do it not only will you save yourself a lot of time you're going to be more efficient and things are going to go a lot easier for you and right. then a lot easier for all of us so right. maybe do it this way that I'm going to show you and not the yeah. way that you could that will just I think that's all it is, though, optimizing, optimizing time in a business. Like mm -hmm. you're managing, they hired you because you have a skill set to be able to optimize everybody's, the company's time it takes to do anything, yeah. to train, to get people on the same track. And that's a huge, like it sounds so little, but that is such a huge task. Yeah. yeah. Um, being the owners of a business, like we see every angle where we're like, wow. Eventually, we're going to have somebody in a position like yourself to do that uh, because the amount of work it takes to manage a team, um, it's, it's, it's quite daunting. And, uh, and it's not like and it's not advertised or like or put out there enough to be like, hey, just to let you know, this is going to suck for a while. Like it's going to be really difficult. Every guru online will be like, just scale the business, hire people to do it for you. Okay, awesome. I did that, but now I'm like, holy shit! They don't. They're not me. Yeah. Like, how do I get them to be me? <laughs> that's that's the hardest thing is you can't like. It goes back into teaching the patience, everything like that. But you're not like you have to let them fail a few times. Like I don't know your guys' industry is a little different than mine, but a lot of times I'll do something, show them how to do it, the fastest way to do it. But even then, they have to do it three other ways to yeah. realize that I've already gone through the three different ways to get to this method so that we have the fastest way. And it's... Well, they, because they have to own it. Yeah, they have to own it. They have if, to see themselves that yes. it's what it is. Right. Um, and that's... That is sometimes, especially with some guys, I, I let them do... Because even my way I do things, sometimes they'll come to me and be like, hey, I have a better idea. I think this is faster and stuff. I'm like, haven't tried it that way. Go ahead and try it. And it fails... And the other way is still faster. And they're like, all right, it didn't work. The other way is still faster. But I let them have that creative little time oh, frame. Yeah. That's so, and, that's a big deal. Yeah, and then that. they saw it didn't work. And then they went this way. Now they're learning the, the process of, oh, well, let's try this. It doesn't work. Okay, this is still the fastest time. Now let's get it done. Yeah. You know, you have to, I think you have to give a little bit of creative time every once in a while. Um, but a majority of the time, there's already ways to do things. And getting them just to do it that way is really difficult sometimes you know i like that though because so so because like in business you know like if you're just owning a business 13 years i've failed so many freaking times i've done the wrong things so many times i've spent too much time on something for no reason too many times but i've learned every single time i would do a mistake or take too much time on something because there, i didn't optimize it or or i failed at something i take that as a i've learned it learned 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 and then i'm I've gotten, you know, Travis and I have gotten to where we are from all of our learning experience. But, like, in the micro sense of employee, yeah, you're giving them that sense that, like, as a business owner or higher-end manager, right, of, of, of you failing multiple times and learning, you're also giving employees micro learn like, learning experiences yeah. of, like, you know, yeah, try that, you know, give it a try, you know. And, and being humble enough to be like, if it actually performed better than what I told them to do, I'm yeah. gonna, sure, yeah. you know, it's uh, you're gonna change how you're gonna do it. Um, be like, wow, that was actually open mind. But most, you know, if they fail and or if it or if they're wrong, that's gonna stick with somebody way quicker than having oh, you yeah. teach them. <clears throat> yeah, the lesson learned. And what a great employee to have to go with you respectfully and say, hey, I have this idea that I think would be even more efficient. 
Like, that is exactly who you want there. Yeah, Not only yeah. are they thinking about the ins and outs of how you do something, but they're proposing something that would be better for everybody. And then your openness to, and that's where that patience and understanding comes in as a manager or owner, where you're like, yeah, let's try it. Yeah. All right. And then, then the nice thing is, too, because you know, as soon as you say, well, so you sign off on that, I speak from experience as how I've done that multiple times with like crew members for weddings and stuff like that. I already have the contingency plan for yeah. if that doesn't work, this is how I'll make up for it. Yeah. It's like, or I have the, the side thing just in case, because if it does fail, great. But hey, if it's better, it's yeah. fantastic. I, yeah, I also found like there was this thing that uh, I was watching where, you know, uh, uh, it was like this, this, um, multi-million million dollar business owner or whatever right he's where like somebody made a mistake that cost him a million dollars and he was in and, and you and then somebody asked him well did you fire him? He's like, no i spent a million dollars teaching them what not to do i would you know yeah. <laughs> they're never going to do that again yeah. but you know if, uh, <laughs> i'm not going to lose that know, investment <laughs> yeah the, you're investing time and money into people to make mistakes because you know it's better than just replacing people right away when yeah. when there's no Unless they're like truly a, a shit employee or like a shit for like, yeah. but in a normal sense, it's okay for an employee to fail over and over or so or a team member to fail over and over because you're yeah, actually that's investing a, that's in training. That's a pretty big loss though. I have a loss. <laughs> yeah, I, that hurts my heart a little bit. It's just like, yep, yeah, I spent a million bucks to, to teach this person what not to do. They'll never do it again. Yeah. That's you know? true. That's... It's like, so why would I hire somebody new to, to have them potentially do the, do do the, the same, same thing. exact thing? Yeah. Well, like, that's a good fucking point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you... Like, as an owner, for example, like my boss, when you find someone that you like, like this, someone who wants to learn, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to move up, I want to get better, you know, and occasionally I do screw some, I don't know everything, so occasionally I do screw some things up, but I don't, I will never make the same mistake again. again. So, so your million dollar loss, that, that person's probably been, been with the company or whoever for such a long amount of time, they probably made, made a lot of money at the same time. time. And now, now this one thing, thing they went down this path, path learn not to do this again, again. and the, the reason why for it, and now it's going to stick in their brain. brain. But, but they've already invested all that time, energy, money, everything like that, and the person still wants to learn and keep going and grow and help do things. And that's, that's, that is the biggest thing is when you find people that want to, they want to grow and learn more and you want to invest more time and energy into them because they want to move up. You know, like I try and get all my guys to the point where they're running crews, you know. So like, in order to do that is all the mistakes. All they, they have, have to go through the mistakes. mistakes. And I still have to make a lot of mistakes before I can fully run the job, you know? Wouldn't that be, so then that's the, op, like, that would be the optimal way to run a team is, is, because there's, there's managers who have zero nonsense. You do it, you do something wrong one time, they're pissed and they want to fire you. Yeah. Right. Which is, you know, I guess a way to do it, but like, yeah. but then you're resetting every time, whereas you are managing, you know, in what, you know, Travis and I are also doing the same place. Like we hire people and, and we know they're not, you know, you know, people aren't perfect. We teach them, you know, ways they try other things. They fail that they fail at, you know, the ways that we teach them to ongoing, but like that's time invested, yeah. which is also, which also costs money to teach, train, yeah. create SOPs every single freaking time we find a bottleneck or, or new freaking service or services and SaaS cup products to like help us manage this. That's all money, but like you're creating a team that's like going to be pretty ride or die with your company. Yeah. And they're going to give it their all because they feel comfortable that they can make mistakes and be a person. Yeah. They're not like on edge all the time and trying to hide things from you and vice versa. You know, they're, they're, they're willing to accept their defeats and, or their wins and uh and grow with the company i feel like that's just a better way to do it yeah and as like like you said the manager that just gets really irritated and wants to fire i think i i personally believe in the fact that when something happens and someone screws up um and a manager gets on someone for something i think that is okay as long as it doesn't get like too dramatic you know like if, if something happens and I raise my voice, I'm like, well, why did you do that? Oh, yada, yada, yada. I think that's okay. But going straight to the firing is where that's just like, it's a little too much. But yeah. you have to, when something happens, you have to make it known not to do this again. Of course. It, you know? It's like being a parent in some ways. Like, Got me there. If wow. you, <laughs> but seriously, though, if you, if you go in and then like, you, you can't just 
you have to firmly note when something's been done wrong. You have to have empathy. Yeah, but what I'm saying is For like, everything. yeah, e empathy. But like, if you like, like he said, you yeah, some some people will blow up and stuff. But there's a strategic way to be firm and to like state, and that's the thing. I don't I don't really very very seldom do I ever yell with my daughter or get get frustrated because usually I lean in and I'm like. You, so what did you, you learn did, today? You did something wrong. <laughs> and because I, I'm so calm and stoic about it, but I've set that precedent with her. So she's just like, you she know. Knows, she knows. She, <laughs> and knows. She, she knows. She knows. And then Josh does the same thing where it's like, if I have to say something, you know that you, 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 you fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing is you you, esta you establish that respect. Yeah, exactly. No. Nobody's going to respect you if you just... If you're unwilling to work with anything. Well, and I've, I've worked with, I've worked with bosses that just fly off the handle, freak out, throw brush fits and stuff. And it's like, well, this is the industry we work in. No. Yeah. <laughs> that person lacks a level of maturity right. to be able to handle something going wrong and being able to maintain composed and be a good leader. Right. You're not a good leader if you can't control your own emotions strategically to come up with what the next plan is. Right. No. And people's emotional stance, like if you're like that, People will instantly think of you in negative ways all the time. They're never going to want to talk to you, grow. They're, yeah. they're always going to hide things from you. They're always going to be scared of repercussions. Like, you, 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 they're not going to respect you. And have you, you, ever, have you ever noticed that people like that, too, are always very, very, very nice when they're not doing that? <laughs> like, it's like they're making up for it. Like I, I've I've had people that will just be like, like yeah, like, but 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 then time. in order and it, maybe it's manipulation, maybe it's just their personality. But later you're like, no, but they're a really good guy though, yeah. and, and they apologize later. It kind of sounds like an abusive relationship yeah, to me. Yeah, <laughs> like oh, it, it's very it, it's it's just so important that you have. I mean that's why it comes back to patience too. Yeah. Is. The fact that you are set to be the leader. The leader isn't one that just is able to yell at people when they do something wrong or teach them how to do something yeah. right. It's the leader. The leader's job is to actually strategically come up with the solution and then make sure that it's something that can that can be valuable later. We were talking earlier about all of the different lessons we've learned. Me and I think something that I think you also had this realization was every time I failed, I stopped even like beating myself up over failure mm -hmm. a long time ago. I stopped, I stopped like, it stopped being a bad thing to me. Yeah. I, I'd be like, this sucks because now I have to do all this other stuff. But I was also excited because I'm like, man, I, I, and it, sound, it sounds kind of crazy, but you're like, dude, yes, this thing 100%. happened. So now I learned this thing. So now next time, boom. Yeah. And I feel like I'm refining like that perfect system. Right. You're always going to be, you know, as a man, man you're managing, you know, a, a team business, you know, you're managing a ton of stuff. There's gonna be things where you're like, oh shit, like like that 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 project was not as profitable because this and this. So now we have to like, you know, do this and this and this. That sucks, but hey, you know, good learning experience. Instead of being like, oh, oh man, this is gonna suck, you know. Yeah. It's like, dude, just 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 it is what it is. Learn from it, and like as a manager, you you pivot and you just. Don't do that again. Like, like you also will learn a shit ton of stuff. I mean, look at our like our employees. We had that. We have an, We had an a, a employee meeting one time where, you know, I was, I, I they were they were appreciative. We were talking about you know the 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 role like like how the dynamic is in the team in, in the business. And one thing I don't do is I don't you know our we have remote employees that they, they, they don't they they're not like in building. Yeah, a little bit different, but. Um, I don't track their time. You know, that's a big thing for like, if you have somebody that's remote being tracked and timed on everything they're doing immediately makes them feel like they aren't trusted and they, and people get anxiety for that and they don't work as efficiently. I started, I, I, I started off with, I give you autonomy to get the projects done that we want to get done and your job done. I, I also, they also know I'm not going to be walked all over and I, and I, I, as a manager, have redundancies to understand what's being done, and yeah. they all know that. But I am not a micromanager in that sense of, like, I'm going to nitpick everything you possibly do because somebody might do something minutely different, but do it, but the same process is being done. 
Mm-hmm. It's just I'm not going to nitpick every yeah. nuance of that. That creates such a good dynamic with the team, and they that was actually something that they appreciate. They said that I've never had anybody not track their time, which our team, they're on it, bro. <laughs> they, they are on everything. Yeah. Like they're they freaking work all day. Like like and and they're you know even though sometimes they get bottlenecks because of my managing you know processes of an ad that I need to fix. It's a learning experiences for me. Yeah. But they trust like they they work way more efficiently and more confidently to do their stuff knowing that like just that little detail. Yep. Right? And as a manager, I see that. Well, and you you give them the amount of freedom that they have that accountability built in. They've been given the opportunity to perform at peak efficiency, and if they waste that opportunity, they know they won't have it anymore. Right. And it's and it's a gamble most ma- most owners or managers won't take, where you give them the so much freedom. It's like how people started working from home, and efficiency yeah. actually went up when yeah. they had the freedom to just be in their comfort zone and not be shackled to a desk every day. Right. But then companies started to get worried about it because they don't trust their employees. And they started like having more and more requirements. Or yeah. The webcam has to be on so we can see you the working. The mouse has to move every to see like, you two working. minutes or whatever, right? Yeah. It's like, dude, when in reality, and we all know we've worked jobs where yeah. we just did, we, the amount of times we were being efficient with our time, yet we still accomplished the job. Right. Probably really often. I mean, watch yeah. o- watch Office Space. He's like, yeah. I, I work ten minutes a week, <laughs> but I finish everything you want me to do. So it's like, but, but if it's, you but if yeah. you get the employees excited and you give them the freedom to, to to take care of that or to actually achieve the best that they can be. Yeah. I mean, I think all three of our personalities are set where we we always knew we wanted to be more than the bottom rung of the ladder for em- employees because we're the types that push push yeah. hard to do things the best way we can do because mm-hmm. it matters to us. Right. Well, a lot of the people aren't that way necessarily, but if you give them the freedom to rise to the occasion... Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's the other big thing. A lot of people do not want any accountability or responsibility. Right. Like, right. a lot of people don't. And I, it's an interesting time right now, I'll be honest, because, one, I'll know, everyone just wants to show up, get their eight hours, and then leave. Sure. You know? And... and some of those people actually want to show up and be like, okay, well, I wanted to do this, this, and this, and I want to grow up the ladder and all this stuff and take more responsibility and accountability. But at the same time, they're the same people that show up on time and then leave. Like, they don't say later. They don't want to learn anything more. They just work their straight 40 hours, and then they're gone and out of there. Yeah, they um, want the reward without the risk. Yeah, and that's... Or the work. And, and that's just the interesting well, part. sacrifice. It's like, sacrifice. like right sacrifice. now, with everything going on, everyone's hiring. Like, everyone's got some job thing going up. And there's a lot of positions that can... Are high-level positions that can be filled for someone who just wants the responsibility and the accountability. Right. But everyone today it just seems like everyone doesn't doesn't want that they want to be in there with the no risk factor right but, and then, I, I get it though like my mostly because my my dad is the is exactly that like he's been a cook at beverly's the best restaurant in town highest class yeah. just it just is what it is right it's the top tier right he's been a chef there for 35 years he was there before it was called beverly's he He's, he's probably the longest standing chef in that restaurant right now. But he doesn't want to babysit people. He just wants to do his job. Yeah. And he, I mean, I'm sure they've asked him because he's very talented. How do you work that and be an efficient cook for so long, be super straight edge most of the time? His, he makes dirty jokes here and there. But he, <laughs> he, he still, you know, all the rest of the cooks, he, he's watched like three generations of cooks come through, party it out, get fired. And he just kind of, he just keeps making his steaks. Setting up it, look, looking at his plate, and like so, it's yeah. so easy for him, and he loves it so much. No. Yet when they ask him to become chef, where your manager, right. he's like, no, <laughs> why would I? I have to manage these people enough just being around other cooks yeah. for yeah. this place to run efficiently. So he like shadow manages in a way, but he does not want the accountability or the pay. He doesn't care about the money. He he wants to just be able to do his job well. And, and that's a prime example of someone who still cares about the quality, but has no interest in. Hundred percent. So people just want to work. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's people that just they don't want that higher end, you know, job to be a, like the higher end jobs usually are people that are managing stuff. Like yes. Pretty important stuff. Then there's the people that think they deserve 
the pay yeah. without the work. Generally speaking, those people will get a nice shit sandwich of reality pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but as a manager of, you know, a team, you have to, you have to understand people. Like, like the amount of, the amount, the amount of times I've like researched and like learned, like, like taught myself just watching videos about how to read people, how to, how to talk, um, you know, in a certain way to, to confidently, but like understanding, not, not, not making people get defensive. Uh, you have to like understand all this stuff. And that's why managing is so freaking hard because yeah. you're, you're working with all of those people, you know, but the people that want to come there, sacrifice their time, sacrifice, they don't give a crap if they're getting paid for time, whatever. They'll stay yeah. later to learn. They'll yep. stay, they'll go and research. They'll see, they'll have, they'll buy you a, or, you know, they'll invite you to a coffee yeah. the, and then obviously you'll buy the coffee, but pick your you know, brain, uh, but they want to pick your brain. Yeah. They want to, they want to understand. That's sacrifice because that's sacrificing time, and 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 that's the stuff that I did, but that's yeah. because I want. I'm serious about this. So so as a manager, you know, people that want to be like, well, I want to learn how to do this, blah blah blah, but then you know that they're full of shit. Yeah, that's where you just be like, yeah, you know what? Hey, on the, what are you doing this weekend? Let's let's let just come out here, come down here for like a, you know four or five hours. I'll teach. I'll I'll show you some stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll teach. <clears throat> you'll know instantly if yep. they're fucking serious or not because then Whoa. they'll ask, am I being paid? The moment they say, am I being paid? Never mind. You know what? The, you know, okay. you're, <laughs> the knowledge I'm going to teach you is worth more than what you would make per hour. And what's, like, cra I, and what's I, crazy is if you think about it, the boss is also do donating his time exactly. to that's try to that's, teach. That's worth and, the, and, the, and the person who can recognize that and see the value in that and, oh, they are, they, they're taking they're an take interest in their day to go my career. To, yeah. Like that's and huge. you know, and I and I've practiced that over the years with the different interns that we've had, and I've had as Pulse Productions because we used to run this. I used to run my company on myself and everything I could do, and some different high school college interns that needed their needed their hours for work experience. So yeah, I'm used to them not knowing anything, no. <laughs> and me teaching them everything on the job in the middle of a wedding <laughs> like yeah this, this is okay okay you got to hold the camera like this and hit record <laughs> don't don't do just stay right there and yeah. but sharing so much knowledge all the time talking as i do everything that's Bro. something even from the dishwashing days is you're not i'd be like okay you're you're stuff. you're brand new your job today is to follow me and i'm like i am doing this this way for this reason i am doing this this yeah. way for this reason i'm doing this this way for this reason repeat that back to me yeah and I, I was like, er, and they're like, uh, I was like early twenties and doing that, and then like it, it was so natural and it's so important to just teach. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, what's worth more? I mean, in today's society, what's worth more, money or knowledge? Mm. I mean, that's the big. Like me, I'm it's knowledge. I'm 100%, too. It's always been knowledge. Yeah, I'm, I'm too. I'm young, so like, there's no reason for me to worry about money. Like, as long as I have what I need to have to be able to take care of myself, life's good. But the knowledge, like my whole perspective on life and the aspect of working, is the knowledge I learn no matter where I go. For example, like my pastas and construction stuff, and I've worked on farms and done all that. Like, I have a lot of knowledge, a lot of different skill sets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the economy crashes, something like that happens, our currency is worth nothing. My skills will still be worth whatever they're worth. Like I can, I can go out and do things and people will still want them because I have such a vast knowledge in so many things. But now we have this generation where it's, okay, well, money, 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 money. Like you need to pay me more money, 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 money. And it's not like I want to learn this stuff. You know, like I, the more you learn, then down the line, wherever you go, the currency will still pay you for what you know. It doesn't matter. What, yeah. Whatever you go. You'll be paid what what market value is. And market yeah. value, if it goes lower, then generally speaking, it costs, lower to, it costs less to live. It, it's always going to scale. And that's the thing with, like, because like, Travis and I had this conversation. It was like, the amount of knowledge that I've ingested. And, yeah, I'm 29. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm still pretty young. Um, you kids. I, can, I will never be broke ever in my life. The amount of stuff, because since I was 18, I wanted to own my own business um, because I realized pretty early on that I will never be paid what I'm worth um, to anybody unless I do it myself. Yeah. Uh, because I want to I wanna always do 
the best of the best for anybody in any situation, in any position I was in, and but that was never rewarded mm. in the way I was like, well, hey, exactly. I saved you four hundred thousand dollars exactly. this year, and I'm asking for a seven percent raise, which is like eight thousand dollars a year, and you're not willing to work with me here. Um, it was a pretty big thing for me to be like, okay, I need to really um, do something. I'm like, because if I can save somebody four hundred thousand dollars, I can make four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I. And so I will never be broke. I can go and do any, absolutely anything anywhere with the knowledge I have and have an income of $10,000 a month or more, always. Yeah, we, talk, of the we talked about this in the Spotlight podcast when we were being interviewed by, um, by Kyle. I, I believe so, yeah. It was Kyle. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. Sorry. Dude. Sorry. Sorry. Well, if, yeah. you're, <laughs> if you're one of our four viewers, <laughs> I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, the, the type of person it takes to be like an entrepreneur... And, and, and entrepreneurs are labeled, but a manager, like the person who it's important to them to strive for more, they'll be the best employee ever. But if they're undervalued and they reach a cap, like if they're working yeah. in an industry where, oh, you got to go to school for 10 more years before you can proceed any further, <laughs> then, the, then they hit it and then they're gone. Because if they can't push, like I, I call them the pushers, they're literally just pushing to be, if I, and I've always, I've had this perspective since I got into the workforce. It's like, if I'm going to do something, I better damn well be doing it the best way it could possibly be yeah. done. And I better be doing everything I possibly can to, to be the best employee I can yeah. be. Not for them, but for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at the time, dude. And if I they mean, don't I value like, that, then I'm that, out. Bro. And I was like, what the heck? Like, what? Why aren't you seeing? They're like, we so appreciate you, Josh. But that's like... But, pizza it, but now that I'm a manager, pizza parties? I will never, ever let, yeah. like, I will never let that happen to anybody well, that's under me. Yeah. I will always value, if I see that in somebody, if they're going above and beyond, because we have, I mean, even in our team, there's, oh, there's yeah. people that go above and beyond. Well, that, that's a prime example. I, I'm interviewing video editors, right? And I'm, I'm going through, like, a list of, like, 50 applicants and reading, and just reading the data that the team gathered for me. Mm -hmm. And then I get a message from our from our social media poster person, there's a title, but I it yes, escapes Diane. me. <laughs> she and then she sends me, hey, I heard you were hiring a video editor. I took the raw raw footage because she's part of my part of the team, which was posting. She usually just post it, and she created videos just to show me what she could do. I'm interested in that position. I didn't I didn't ask her. I didn't yeah. put it out there. She went and she made stuff on her own because she wants to learn more to do that position and, yeah. she, and she'll work competitively because she knows that there's going to be a lot of learning. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, the, you know, she's one of the people. Yeah. She's one of the people yep. that has that. Yep. Yeah. And that is a very valuable person. Even if I'm not hiring someone who knows how to do it right now, that can just yeah. go, go, go. Like she just showed so much value to me no matter how much work I need to put into helping teach her the yeah. best way to do stuff. Like yep. when you see a person like that and you're the manager, you use that drive as long as you can until they outgrow you. Yeah. Well, that's no brainer. You, you fast track. Yeah. You yeah. fast track them. If they're already in the organization, everything like that. And they want to move up fast track them. You know, that's, yeah, that's how that goes. We also pay them what they're worth. Right. Yeah. So, well, that so that is another thing. So I that's hard for you as the because you don't like you I, don't have full control no, over the business I, to be able to do I that. I don't. But the thing but that, you can advocate, right? I, I can. But the thing that irritates me the most is like I've been here for six months. Like it's time for a raise. You know, like it's been here for six months, eight months. I've been here for two years. Need a raise. Like, okay, well, what can you now do? I look at it as how much can you now take off my plate? You know. I don't look at it as show, show your value. Yeah, like like that's fine. You've been here for six months. You've been here for a year. Whatever it is, you can do this, this, and this. You know, but like, can you excel and now do even more stuff? Like, what what am I looking? What can you take off of my plate? And if you can take stuff off of my plate, then yeah, you deserve to go this way. But you saying you've been here six months and you haven't really learned anything, yeah. why? I I hate. Well, and that's a, I hate that. That's a really interesting perspective to have too, is because, so, you're. Say, you know, an employee is an investment, right? And if they are expecting you to pay more for that investment, where's the higher value in that? If, if someone comes to you, it's like, I want to be paid more because I've been here for so long. It's like, okay, well, how, how, how does that investment make more sense for the actual company? Because, I mean, ra just, 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 ra just random raises is, is great, but 
are they gaining enough experience where they are actually better for the company or are they just staying at that exact same level yeah why why, why that, would that comes on your plate though yeah i mean because I... then because then like during team meetings if someone's saying hey i've been here six months you know i want to raise they don't have the knowledge to understand what a raise actually means yes right, right. so then you your job is to educate them like you know what hey you've been here for six months and you've excelled in what your position and your pay is if you want to get if you want to make more money there's other options and that's where you need to line out yeah if if you want more if you want more money if you want this amount of pay more this is the job added to your plate you need and here's your sacrifices in that like time and whatever extra time that you need to work or whatever the case may be or being in a more stressful situation every day and then you can and for this pay it's for the you know if you want to get paid more you need to take on more work but that's your responsibility to educate the employees yes of like we don't just blanketly give you raises for a position that's yeah. worth this money you've excelled in this position and if you're just doing what you we've asked you to do in this position there's there, then yes you're gonna get your standard raise but if you want more here is your guidebook of how to excel and get more money by adding on different things. Yeah, well, that's sort of like knowledge. The more you know and the more you learn and the more like I run around consistently on my phone, consistently fires are going on, there's a million things going on and I just trying to get one thing done, but I can't do that because I'm over here. It's like, okay, so if you can take this off my plate and you can handle this little thing there, then I see it as I do not have to put my time into that. Mm-hmm. Therefore, like, Yes, you know, you, you've worked up, like you can now handle something that I don't have to handle and now my time is not over there, like I can focus on this. That's how I look at it. I look at it as, I am not like, for my boss, I look at it, I can handle a lot of things. You know, I take a lot off his plate yep. so he can go out and do his other things. Um, and, and, that, and that's a good way of doing it because I've worked for like the hospital or for other like large, large employers where that's the expectation but there's no reward. Where it's just like, right. hey, we need we need you to do four more things in your job right. task. Hey, we're that was expand- never we're, discussed. We're when expanding. I got out. We're expanding the scope of what's expected of you. Sorry, it's hard times, and you're just yeah, we like, just need the help. It's but like, but, oh, no, but no, it's no. not like, oh, you want to do more? Let let's get you here. And that's the thing is a person. People like us recognize that right away. We'll negotiate it you, Be- because like, you understand that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or or or, or that that's get... when the that's when the ticker starts on how long am I going to be here? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Once you start getting Most exploited, people, they don't know how. Yeah. It, it's funny because from the employee perspective, it also this is another point that I was thinking. Like with how hard it is to get employees right now, like asking for a raise that early or being really dead set on it. I was like, why aren't you paying me more money? It's like extortion at that point. No. <laughs> like, I will leave and then you'll be screwed. So give me more money now. It's like, but the investment into you is not this is what it has you have not done anything more than the bottom but if they do come up with like hey i've been working here for six months it's it's like the editor like this this this, yeah and then then goes up you'd be like wow you know what i you know what let's that's where you open the door and be like yeah actually you you would be justified if you continue to do this and that is your role now. That your job position has now changed yes. to add these specific things. Like me, yeah, I've sa- I saved a large corporate, you know, I work for Otis. Well, I saved them $400,000 in a single branch for yep. part sales because I know how to efficiently order parts. And I researched and I spent the time to understand elevators to where I eventually, be- you know, became an apprentice. I did not just go there and do what they told me to do was, Hey, here's your book of parts. It's like this fucking big. Uh, when when we get an, L, you have to just go in the computer, and go order six, and yeah. then just clean up the warehouse. That was like the the status. I went above and beyond and learned and categorized things and got all their and then I get befriended all the mechanics and went to their job sites and helped them with things and you know because I learned yeah. I picked their brain over and over. I would help them for a knowledge and they would be more than willing to explain what they're doing if I'm there helping them. And, and getting them what they want. I go to the fucking boss, immediately a 7% raise justified over a, over a booklet I even as, I had of how I did it should have been, that manager should have saw that and been like, you know what? I'm gonna advocate for this guy for corporate 
and, or I'm going to do anything I can to get this guy a 7% yeah. raise he's asking, which is very reasonable considering. And But he failed, and I quit. Yeah, Rightfully so. I quit and put in my two weeks and moved here. Yeah. I said, hey, if you give me a 7% raise, I will stay. If you don't, I will leave. He thought that was a power move. I just said, no, dude, I'm... I say, worth I it. did this, yeah. but like I, I can't, I can't afford my like to live in LA with with what I'm being paid anymore. I, and he, I, he thought I was just like some. Blo- I was like, no, all right, well, then, dude, I, I put on my two weeks. But I was an employee that probably would have excelled and 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 astronomically increased their their value wow. in that branch, and they lost me because of my new, uh, my because they didn't want to to make it seem like they're unfair to, like it doesn't. I saved you four hundred thousand dollars, bro. That whole fair, you <laughs> said fair, you, you know, said fair. I hate yeah, that word like, fair. Yeah, that, that's, that's what they were saying. Like, like, oh, I don't want to be. Like, it's fair to. It's not fair to give you a seven percent raise versus. I'm like, right. is it fair that I that I that I saved you four hundred grand? They didn't like. And that's like, and that's so funny because when I was working like with some of the people, I have already said when I was working at the hospital, I recognized that the people who were able to be assertive and say, I like, I'd go in the manager's office. And I'd act like I'm the shit, right? But I'd follow it up with everything else. Like, yeah. and, I, and I'd make it very clear. I do good work. I'm a very valuable employee. Without saying it, but it's an attitude, right? I'd walk in and say, yeah. this is the schedule I need for reasons. And then I'd get it. <laughs> and then I'd hear complaints from everyone else. I just can't get the schedule I want because they just won't listen to me. Yeah. And I'm like, you know... It's the, not fair. The, 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 there's a difference between... And this is something that's blurred a lot: being assertive and being entitled. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. That is such an that's important. That's a fine line, uh, brother. Too. Right. That's a fine line. Because you you truly have to stand up for yourself. Right. You you if you want it, the only one who gets it is the one who asks for it and pushes for it. Yeah. And, and then about. everyone else doesn't get it. Right. Because <laughs> right. not everyone can There's have complaint. not everyone can have the best job, the best opportunities, the best things. But people, I suspect people like us, fight for that. Yeah, because even, if, even if you're not if, like if, us, if they someone's gonna, do that. well, not everyone can have it. There has to be cogs in the machine. There has to be people that just do their jobs. Like an employee, and like, stay with like it. If they want up and pay, but they still want to just be an employee, they don't want to manage people. There are tons of ways to do that, but it comes down to is that company valuing? people doing extra work if they if they don't value it then, there will, then you need to leave as an employee find find it find a workforce that would there, value there, there will all, new things. there will always be shifts in things that people don't want to do and there oh, will always be people true. that have to do it that's but true. the people who don't end up doing it and the people who end up getting the best like time slot or whatever sought after are the ones that are assertive do a really yeah. good job and ask for it yeah. and make the best presentation like it was such an interesting saying, yeah. perspective to see, though, because like the managers, the, our, we had a really good manager in that specific spot, but someone had to do it, and I knew I didn't want to, <laughs> or I, I wanted to do these things here, right. and I wanted to be in more control over my own destiny. Because yeah. in reality, when you get into a, like, a big, huge company and you're just like bottom tier, um, the amount of control you have over your own work. And your own life in that company is nil. Yeah. So, figure out what you can control yeah. and push for it. You I mean, you could still get shut down, but at least yeah, I tried. Also, you know. At least I tried. <laughs> but people that are assertive and assertive in a good way. Yeah. They're they also aren't entrepreneurs. They don't want to do their own thing. They want to just work in a company. Yeah. And so you're explaining in a way what where that goes both ways, which is which is value for both. So somebody listening who just wants to work for somebody, that is great advice to be like, hey, if you want to get paid with your, what you're worth, either, first of all, the company that you're working with, you need to understand if they don't, if they don't allow you to do that, then you need to go to another company yeah. and find that. But then when you do find that company that it does value you, like value work, then you can be a, you can be a servant competent and be like, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, TJ, you know, I, uh, you know, I've been working here for, you know, six months a year, you know, and I, I feel like, uh, I, I really want to make more money in this company. I want to be comfortable, you know, and I want to be able to afford a little bit more 
of a fun lifestyle with my family, but, you know, uh, I've done this and this and this, and, you know, um, I feel like this deserves a little bit more. It's out of my scope of work, and what do you think, right? And you're like, you know what, yeah, you're right. You know, that, yeah. you know and then you give it a, you negotiate, be like, you know what, what do you think about 5% more per year? Oh, you, sweet. That's like what? But you, $300 a but, but month but you'll extra? But you'll work an extra week in but, each. But, the, you know, but then <laughs> you're like, you know, hey, but, you know, but the expectation now is that is your position. Yeah. Your position is not what you've originally agreed upon. You have to agree upon the, this is now extra thing that you've brought value into. You are yeah. in charge of that. Yeah. And, and that's where an employee actually thrives too. Mm -hmm. They don't need to be an entrepreneur. You know, entrepreneurs will do that regardless. Right. Um, but uh, but and then they'll leave eventually because eventually they're just going to do. It. But yeah. employees, there's employees that. Oh, there can there can still be that. good yeah. assertive employees yeah. without being entitled employees. Right. The difference is is they have the emotional intelligence to recognize the situation, and that's something that uh, uh, like out of everything we've talked about, I think could be a very valuable piece of information for people is, you need to say you want to raise, you need to recognize what that raise means for the company, right. what that money, what their investment means, what value can you offer? And then as an owner, if someone asks for a raise, try to recognize whether or not it's a person being assertive, wanting to do more to make more, or if it's a person being entitled, thinking that they're worth more than what yeah. you're paying everybody else. Right. They, those are important distinctions to make. And that that's like a thing we, a thing we a thing we stumbled it. we've yeah. stumbled upon that I've not heard put that way before. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, that was that was a great point. That's why I wanted to ha hammer on because yeah. you know, it's Whiskey and Business podcast. But dude, that's a that's a hell of a good like take on working. Of even if you're just working anywhere, how do you get paid what you're worth? And is it possible to get paid what you're worth in in a company? Yeah. And having that mindset to be like, if that company doesn't value other people's stuff, like or or value other people's work, then that's not a company you want to work for. But then yeah. to find the company, how do you do that? Okay, you need boys. to provide value. So I love that, dude. That was a great fucking point. But hey, to close it out before we do this whiskey thing, so what do you have advice for in your position for people that you know? Let's say advice for employees and advice for other managers. What would you what what would be a takeaway that you seen that you would that you would do over again or advice that you Well that's that's, that's two big things. things. Employees and managers, that's, that's for the manager side of things, it's the teaching and the patience. Those are the two things. With employees that you know want to actually excel, that want to move up, not the ones that are like, Oh, I want this, this and this, the ones that actually show up work hard, stay late, get things done, is the patience and the teaching and understanding and getting them to where they are moving up to take your spot. You know, that's what I try to do. I try and get everyone to take my spot because mm -hmm. I, I want to then go up to another spot. That, that's have, exactly the structure of how we're trying to Yeah, And if I have a competitive thing where there's four guys that are like, all right, I all want this spot, then it's great because then there's a competition. You know, that's with employees is I like to set up the competition side of things, okay? Mm -hmm. So person A gets something done in 10 minutes, person B gets something done in five minutes. Can you get that done? Can you get that done at the same time as B? You know, like, is that, is that a thing? I like competitions between employees. But my biggest thing for manager is teaching, patience. That, those are the two biggest things I, I have for that position is right now is just those two things. Focus on those two. And it'll work out for employees. Employees just you're just saying strive, strive, uh, have fun with your job, well, make it a competition well, in well, a friendly matter. No, like like from employees, like listening to this, and if an employee wants to move up, they want to move up to a manager position. So they as well need to be a student and be patient. You know, that's what I would say for employees: is be a student and be patient, learn as much as you can, and work up. You know, that that is what I would say for employees. Manager is teaching and being patient. Employee is being a student and being patient. So then, final question: What 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 can what can a person do right now? Like like not in your company specifically, but like in general, as you a manager, what would stand out to you? Somebody like as somebody under you're managing somebody, somebody that you're managing. What what would stand out to you to be like that person 
is, is going to what, gonna what go would make what would make you approach them to tell them I want to give you a raise to do this more this more stuff. You're going to think this is this is probably not the answer you want, but this is the answer I'm going to give. There's no right or wrong. A quicker pace. A quicker pace is what, like, in my faster, trying huh? things, is, is faster. Like, not just faster, more efficient? <laughs> well, actually, I'm going to say faster and more organized. Because it's uh, there's a whole lot of walking in between things mm-hmm. for other supplies. And it drives me crazy. Like, grab everything. Like, I have a system. I get what I have, I line everyone out, I grab the stuff, whether it's brooms, whether it's screw guns, caulking, whatever it is, I have all of it. You're, say, it you're saying you want like a strategic worker then, because I, I, like faster can, not, it can mean a lot of things. Well, I want, I want the efficient, like there's no need to walk back and forth when you've done the same thing a yeah. hundred times. A person okay? who actually thinks. Yes, so one, think, grab everything you need so you're not wasting time, and then two, I, I truly believe we can pick up the pace on a lot of things. Like yeah. it's, it's a slow, slow thing. There's a lot of people who are like, well, I can do this in this amount of time. And then I go and do it, which is a lot faster. Don't get me wrong, mm. but it's nowhere close to their time, you know? And that's where I'm like, so we you're can, looking for efficiency. You know, we get oh, efficient, yeah. pick you, up the You pace. value efficiency and that's how you would, well, you would gauge somebody is yeah. being faster and more organized as being more efficient. Yeah. In my line of work, someone who is able to accomplish six things in a day is more efficient than the person that's doing three. Now it all changes because there's different tasks, mm-hmm. but someone who like they're for a majority of the stuff we do is just small little things. We're I, the in-between guys. I have a question. Do you teach them the efficient way to do things? Several times. I've so, done it. I've, so, so it's like the expectation it's not of not just of, efficiency, it's more of a, and, and it's not even like they're coming up with them it on their own. It's people who will actually follow your instructions. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gone so far going as fast. to like get the um like Milwaukee packouts. Like I have a Ryobi thing which has a tower on it. It has a bottom drawer for sawzall, skill saw, and then top drawer for drill impact and then screws and everything on the top. You know? And I was when we no, were doing no, a real quick. Did you say Ryobi? I well I have a Milwaukee. Okay. But the Ryobi is the one Milwaukee. Yeah. Let's just stick with Milwaukee. So for all yeah. people, controversial statement. He has no tools. So you guys, you guys are. Someone's nerds. gonna make fun of us for. Ryobi. You guys are tool. You guys are tool nerds. Did I say Ryobi? Rigid, rigid. Oh, Ryobi. okay. Rigid, oh, rigid, oh my rigid. gosh, dude! I was like, uh, I, I thought we. I, 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 I was never like, hey, brother. We were going to bleep. I don't to think want to advertise that you we're use Ryobi. Later. No, I don't use green. I use the black one, okay. the rigid, rigid box. Yeah. Rigid. My okay, bad. Rigid tools shirt. Sure. Yes, uh, there's nothing beats rigid tools, but in Milwaukee. So you have rigid Milwaukee. I'm just saying, there's somebody who's watch this and be like, "Hey, what company do you work at?" Because this is a construction use podcast. I yeah. use, use Ryobi. Oh, okay. Um, there's literally memes of people being yeah. like of of different tools. That's why I said, "Do you use Ryobi?" Yeah. No, no, I <laughs> use I use all Milwaukee. My stuff's Milwaukee. I have the pack out. I spent beautiful amount of money on my pack out just to make sure, but. Everyone else gets the rigid box because it doesn't get taken care of, yeah. so it's broken. But like that's a clip right there too, yeah. where you're like, yeah, we we use Ryobi. Like, did, did like it? my face was like, no, no Ryobi. That's no why it's Ryobi. like you gotta zoom into my face, and be like, did did you and I talk about at the lounge a while back about how you should buy cheap rakes and sell them for more expensive to your employees that don't buy their own rakes? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, okay. So, yeah, well, it was a well, business idea you and I had. They, well, what they, you could do is you could sell them for a higher amount to no, the people no, who no, don't no, listen no. to you. Hold on, hold on, listen this out. This is, this is a business idea. So what you do is, it's broom. Oh, good, so you good. get brooms. the brooms, okay. and they cost like 15 to $20 for a broom. Sure. And then... And you uh, tell your employees they should be getting these brooms so their cleanup well, goes well, faster. No, 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 no. It wasn't employees, it was subcontractors. Oh, so subcontractors. So subcontractors asked right. me for brooms. And... You go buy a broom and then they take it and then they leave it out. So what you do is you go to the dollar store yep. and buy all the dollar brooms and then say, yeah, this is a 15 to $20 broom. And then they buy it from you, you and they lose it and you continue to sell more brooms. Exactly. And you it's profit. actually a great, it's no, a great, great we, exciting. We, we were having cigars the other day. I'm like, dude, that's what you should do. Yep. You can have, you can you have a side hustle. You guys are getting so into it and in broom, but it's actually like a, it might <laughs> work really it's well. It's a really good idea. Well, like, they, everyone needs a broom. Like, hey, can I borrow a broom? And it's like, dude, I don't have a broom. But it's like, if I <laughs> went to the dollar store. I can sell one to you. saw the bottleneck. Yeah. saw the bottleneck. Bro. Exactly. He's going to be 
So when we see TJ on the street, he's going to have bundles of brooms everywhere. I, I, I don't have one, but I could sell one. But I with, it for 15 bucks. The, the state of the art, the bristles don't fall off. It'll have the Klein tool sticker on it for the electricians. So for the electrician out there, it'll have Klein tool on it. So you have to buy it. You have to buy it. <laughs> Custom make that you, you, you should have it branded with the with the company you work for. So it's also like, oh, it's, yeah. it's like handing out a business card yeah, or a business pen. Card everywhere, yeah. That's a broom. <laughs> So they can buy it, but also they're buying something that's branded with your with the yep. company you represent. Yeah. Well, we do appreciate you you coming on the podcast. All right, showing, showing uh, near the end, we got to review get to, this to the stuff. whiskey because Travis. Oh my god! Apparently, Travis, dude, what do you do? Oh, thank you. Damn, he's thank nice. You. I don't share. Right. So. Yeah. Well, he yeah, wants gotta, me to be able to review gotta, it. No, you did it wrong. You got to really get it up there. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, that video. Oh, yeah, that, that guy. He's, yeah, you got to really get it up there. I'm, or, gonna, I'm gonna like. But he switched the cup and then like sneeze. threw it over his shoulder though. And then he's like, throw it away. Gents. More. <laughs> TJ, thanks for being in. Yeah, yeah thanks fun. for having me. This was fun. This was real fun. Thanks, bro. So, so let's take a taste. Let's get all burned. I do like that you can actually taste the port. Now, now what I'll say, anything in, in sherry casks, port casks, like anything in a wine barrel, or, or a wine cask, sure. Um, it just has that sweeter, subtle taste. Like it's mm -hmm. not, it's not like in your face or much spice. You're just like, it smooths out that like aftertaste every single time, make it way more sweet. And, uh, but you still get that like, man, I still get that vanilla, vanilla front end. And it's like more of that cherry, like, like just sweetness at the, at the back end. Yeah. And it doesn't burn. Right. You don't feel that burn going down, man. Yeah, that thing. I mean, it hits hard on the back of the tongue, but then like the follow through is super smooth. Smooth. I mean, it reminds me. So I've always found it really fascinating the way whiskey can actually bring out more flavors and specific things, but also like make things more tolerable. Like like how I like, like to do Kentucky Mules, because yeah. the whiskey with the ginger is just like chef's kiss. With yeah. with the port, yeah, right? Because port can be pretty bitter or it can be like too sweet and. Like, yeah, it has pork can be really complex, yeah. but this, it, it's so subtle, but it pairs so well with the whiskey that it's. I, it's I like almost it like you're putting a, a couple drops of water, or you have a cube inside right. of like a really tough one that has this. high proof. That's what it feels like, yeah. just this, normally. This is a right. ninety proof as well, but it is for a bourbon wise. I'm not a big bourbon drinker; they're too sweet for me most of the time. I, I just don't like it, but this one is, it's smooth, it's not too sweet, you can taste the port, you really can on that back end. Um, actually, now that you say cherry, I get that cherry mm -hmm. as well. I didn't at first, but now that you say it, I get that cherry. But this that's is... A, that's a big taste. This is a very smooth drink. I, I would I would buy this again. I would also pair this Dude, with a... Saying, uh, I would pair this with a La Creme cigar. Oh. Uh, I regret, dude. Uh, this was a. This is hard to get. It's a limited check, check, release. Check, checking the time to see if I have enough time before the next meeting to smoke my pipe. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, brother, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having we me. Really appreciate it. Well, it was right. a good episode. Back you know, uh, it, it, unique. I think people are gonna get some good. I, I, I don't think just business owners are gonna get value out of this. I think this is gonna be a pretty good podcast for Probably. for pretty much anybody work like that works or manages a team, you know. Yeah. So I well, think, I think there's great. a lot of clips we can pull from it too, and hopefully you listeners enjoy it. I know it that... did start off a little rough there, dude. We're gonna clip that for sure. That's yeah, be that some great clips. Oh, you're gonna getting... clip it. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's, great. it's not only gonna be on the podcast yeah, for our four listeners, but also uh, a social media clip. Social media the clip. memes. And there comes the short. memes. <laughs> Everybody that follows us to see it because when you when you ask Trinidad what he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see. <laughs> Trinidad. 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 Uh, well, yeah. my name's real funny. It's Trinidad John Ruiz. John. 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 <laughs> that's my name. That's where they're going to be fancy over here. Not, fancy over here. John. That's, that's where it's TJ comes like, from. It's all like unique. But I need that John. Ruiz. Yeah. John. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. American. I yeah. love that. That's, all right. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for listening to this this, this week's podcast. Um, we're going to be starting to post a lot because we get a lot of people that are like, I you're the whiskey business guys, and we're like, "What the fuck, dude? We didn't think everybody fucking." Listened we're to we're gonna be in the studio more if Josh can stop pulling all nighters and then <laughs> sleeping for half the day and missing our film days. It'll yes, be great. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen.
All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Peace. See you next time.